Okay. One of the thing about Earth and world and their tension, more of a metaphysical explanation. Uh, remember, the tension between Earth and world, the difference between Earth and world, which is revealed, we're going to see this, this is more clearly in the third uh, essay, the difference, uh, or the nothing, that space of difference, is what Heidegger means by being, or sein with a Y, being with a Y itself, right? The question is then, remember, his whole, if you think back to Heidegger, from being in time onward, he has one question that he's obsessed with. It's called the Seinsfrage, the question of the meaning of being. What's the meaning of being? What is reality? What is what is what is, right? Or what is that which is? How does being happen? How does a world world? How does meaning happen? Being is a question about the meaning of meaning, if you will. How does being act? How does meaning come to be? That's what Heidegger's interested in. Or, or another way of thinking about it. What is being? How does meaning come to be? Or why is being thinkable? Why is being intelligible? Why is it meaningful? How does that happen? How do we get a glimpse phenomenologically? Because he thinks metaphysics, of course, we've talked about this. Metaphysics reduces the meaning of being to one meaning, namely quiddity or whatness, essence, and it misses so much of what reality is, right? What about this other dimension, these other possibilities of what being is or what being means, right? So how do we get that to phenomenologically disclose itself? Because Heidegger's phenomenological method, according to Being in Time, chap, uh, paragraph 7, is all about getting that which is to show itself, you know, not assaulting it, right? We saw that with the thingly character of a thing or what a thing is. We try to let a thing show itself without assaulting it. Well, we found out with an artwork, we precisely can get that distance where we allow something to show itself without assaulting it. And that's precisely what, I, what Heidegger is going to, where he's going with this about being itself. We actually, in the artwork, see being disclosed in that difference, that tension that is uh, being itself, the nothing, nothings in an artwork. What does that mean? It means that this concealed dimension of existence, the difference that, that actually creates meaning. Remember, every determination is a negation. It's actually difference in its relationship uh, with things that are or that which is. It's that which is not in relation to that which is that, that can conflict between the two. We can think of it as earth and world or as revealing and sealing, which is actually being itself. So being is showing itself as that conflict, okay? Artwork then, or artworks are the imaging the imaging forth of the nothing, qua the difference, qua meaning itself. The nothing, that which is not, in conflict with that which is, shows itself in an artwork. And it's not a static process. So being then doesn't reveal itself as something static, as that which is or what is, but as becoming, as that which is dynamic, as that which is changing. Um, and this is the process Heidegger thinks he uh, uh, is equated with, or, or synonymous with, rather, the worlding of a world, the happening of meaning. So in an artwork, as it discloses reality, it discloses being itself, and it discloses itself as disclosive. And the ergo, it discloses being as disclosive. Because remember, being with the Y is the same as uh, this thing Heidegger calls truth or truthing, aletheoi, the uh, the disclosure that always holds back. That itself, truth itself, is revealed in an artwork. Okay, um, and this will have a lot to do with the relationship uh, between what Heidegger will sometimes call an image and an original. Or we can think of as the particular and the universal, or um, uh, think of it as a thing and a form. Remember, artworks are mimetic; they're mimesis, right? They're they're imitations, they're representations. But now, interestingly enough, for Heidegger, now this will come full circle. Thinking back to the criticism of the Van Gogh shoes, artworks are representations of some original. They're images of some original, but in such a way that the image adds to the original or brings the original forth. It's not as though the original pre-exists for Heidegger and then you need some, like a platonic form, then you need a, a particular to get it through. Rather, they, they both buttress one another. They support one another, but they're different, okay? This, by the way, has a lot to do with the difference between uh, Heidegger and Plato, but also Heidegger and Nietzsche. Remember, Nietzsche get, says there is no original, they're just images. For, for Plato, it's top-heavy on original. Heidegger's trying to bridge a gap between Plato and Nietzsche. We'll come back to this in the next video. But... Think of it this way. Artworks are images that make something present, okay? They're mediated immediacies. They mediate something. They mediate an original. They're images of an original. Then the best example of this is something like uh, the body and the soul, okay? <clears throat> the body is an image for the soul. It makes the soul present. My body here is not... Now, it's interesting. Gabriel Marcel, the philosopher, says this. I recognize that I am both not my body and I am my body. This doesn't... I'm not reducible to my body. But if someone were to touch me, I'd say, why'd you touch me, right? But if someone reduces me to my body, I realize that's not me. Sartre has a whole thing uh, uh, that he plays out, um, uh, that plays out with him for in, uh, in uh, being in nothingness, and he calls it bad faith, how 
We want to be our bodies and we want to be our, our possibilities, but we're not. We're always holding back. There's a tension there. And Heidegger wants to keep that tension between my body and my soul, as this is, this is an example, between image and original. Now, Nietzsche, of course, would say there is no soul. There's just a body. Plato would say the body is just a prison for the soul, which is top-heavy. Heidegger wants to keep that tension. Now, body and soul is just an example of, of something we're all familiar with to talk about what he's talking about in an artwork, okay? So you want to think of uh, artworks as imaging forth this tension, okay? That makes meaning possible. So you can't have one, like... You can't have a top-heavy version like Plato, and you can't have a, a bottom-heavy version like Nietzsche. 